Does your house look like this? Are you reminded every hour on the hour that we don't talk about Bruno? Is your little Encanto fan desperate to dress up like their beloved characters? We'll say no more. In this particular episode, we are going to be making an Encanto dress-up apron. That's right, an apron that they can wear over their clothes and share with their friends so everyone can dress up during playtime. An apron dress is meant to grow as they grow. It is meant to be shared. It is meant for playing hard. <laughs> well, if your kid's anything like mine. For this particular video, we are going to make a dress up for Isabella. First, you're going to need a whole lot of tool. Like, a lot. From there, it's time to make my pattern. I use my trusty little tippy here and just cut up some electrical tape because that's what I have in order to map out the general shape of what Isabella's apron would look like. It's not strictly necessary to map it out on a dress form. This just helps me with getting visuals, which can also to help you change your mind if your original idea doesn't work and you can easily adjust it right there in order to make it look better. From there, grab some scrap fabric and drape it over the dress form. Take any kind of pen, marker, sharpie, what have you, and trace through the line, trace the lines through the fabric in order to get your pattern. I then take this to some wrapping paper. On the back side, I like the kinds with the grid on it because it measures out the one inch for you. I make a copy on that so that I can then take my rulers and straighten out my lines and clean up the pattern. Let's talk about that neckline. If you cut it out directly as it is on the pattern, you will end up with a straight collar like this. Instead, you want a roughly flowy pattern. I'm gonna cover how I created this later on in the video. Now to pattern out that high-low tear skirt that Isabella has. First, I needed to figure out my math. I drew up a plan trying to figure out how long I wanted each of the sides to be. I knew that the length I wanted was 28 inches because that was my child's measurement from her waist to the floor. I decided I was going to divide 28 by 3, which gave me 9, 18, and 27. There were three of my lengths. That was close enough. The 9 and the 18 went to the longest sides, and I just kind of fudged around until I came up with 6 and 10 for the short sides. Next, I took the waist measurements of the apron I wanted to make, which happened to be 26. But I need the radius of that 26. So I went to Omni Calculator and let them do the math for me because it's been a long time since math class, which came to about four inches. Doesn't need to be perfect. So here we go, making the pattern. There is a story behind these particular apron dresses. You see, when I was a little girl, my mom made tulle skirts for me, just very basic tulle sewn into a ribbon waistband, and I loved those things. I wore them all the time, my friends loved them. They were great to have for dress up. And I wore them for years because they were able to grow with me. They still fit because of how they were designed, even as I got bigger. So I decided, of course, with my daughter, that I wanted to do the same thing for her. Only I wanted to take it up to the next level. I wanted to have the top part of the costume, not only because it would give you that little bit of extra detail, but because it would help you from having the skirts fall down, which if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I have a thing about the skirts falling down on my little kid's hips. So this really was accumulation of my mother's ideas brought up to the next level. 
But anyway, we're working on patterning out the skirts. If you're able to make a simple circle skirt, it's not that different to make this particular one. You're making half of the skirt for the pattern. So using your radius to map out those arches. For the high low, I map out the short side on one half of the pattern and the long side on the other half. And then I just kind of blend those two halves together until it looks like a smooth arc from the high low. Now on to the cutting out. From your purple fabric, you're going to want to cut a three inch strip for your waistband. This will allow you for a half inch seam allowance, as well as one inch for the front and back of the waistband. I like to use my rulers for this. Then of course, trace and cut out your pattern. You're going to need two of them because you'll want to put right sides together and sew up the sides, then flip it right side out Give it a good press to have a nice apron front. Now let's talk about that flounce on the neckline. I measured from one shoulder to the next following that slope that I created on my dress form. It came out to about 11 inches. So I looked around and found a circle that was 11 inches in circumference. That gave me the interior circle I needed to cut out. Then I found something that was about two inches wider than that which gave me the outer circle. I merely traced those and cut them out in order to get a circle within a circle. I made this doubled so that I could have one in the front and one in the back and sewn up the sides at the shoulders. Doing the circles like this will give you that smoothness at the top of the flounce and yet give you those gentle flounces at the bottom. Yep, it'll look like this. I also went ahead and made a bit of bias tape from the leftover purple fabric. Now you have your apron flap, your flounces, and your bias tape. Let's put them all together. The flounce to the top of the apron, making sure I follow that arc, and then I put the bias tape over the top of that. The flounces are not strong enough on their own, so the bias tape will lend that strength so the apron will be able to have something solid to hold it up. Once that's sewn up, I cut off the excess fabric. I fold over the bias tape and all of this gets sewn down. Make sure that you include a ribbon at the end of the bias tape so you have a means of tying up the top. Onto the skirt. For the bottom section of the skirt, I cut them down to 28 inches. They could be two to three yards in length. I sew two lines of basing stitches across the top and will gather that down. For the high low layers, I cut several layers of each one and then sewed in a basing stitch around the waistband so that they didn't come apart as I tried to stack them. Anyone who's worked with tool knows that it's very slippery and if you've noticed these little yellow fabrics that I've been using, those are pieces of fleece. And if you put your pin through those pieces, the pin won't fall out of the tool. Once everything is pinned, you'll need to decide what is going to be the back of the skirt and then cut out an opening. And now your high-low skirts are ready to be pinned to the bottom most layer. Pin all the layers together and then use that basing stitch in order to gather down so that everything fits snug. Run it through the machine so that the layers do not separate and then attach the waistband. Put the back of the apron to the back of the dress. Line up the center of the apron to the center of the skirt. The apron is going to be folded upwards towards the waistband and then sewn in so that it is nice and strong. So back of the apron to the back of the skirt. Once all these layers are attached, I took the second three inch strip that I cut and cut it in half in order to make two lengths for a tie. Once the waistband has been fully attached, fold your apron up and sew across the top. And now to tackle those flowers. This one took a lot of fiddling for me. Flower arranging is not my strength. So my first attempt didn't turn out that great. Nor did my second attempt. Or my third. So finally I recruited my daughter's best friend's mother to come help me. She has a much better eye for all of these things. And while it turned out beautiful, it wasn't quite there yet. My mother saw the picture 
and decided that she was going to come over and show me how to do it the right way. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. I decided to hot glue the flowers onto the tool. I got them down very quick, very secure, and I don't have to worry about them falling off during playtime. Once my mom gave me the general outline of how she stated the flowers should be, it was merely a matter of filling in all the gaps that she had left for me. She wasn't going to do the whole thing for me, you see. If you're better at flower arranging than I am, this part will be a breeze. For the bodice, I decided I would attach them using French knots and picked out some embroidery thread from my stash. Once I decided on a color, I used that thread in order to stitch them down. I don't have good footage of using this French knot, not only because the battery on the camera went out, but because it also took me a while to re-remember how to do it correctly. <laughs> don't worry about using a French knot if that's not what you want to do. Just stitching them down works just fine. Was it hard to stitch them down with all those pins poking through? Why, yes. Yes, it was. But once they are all stitched down, you're ready for playtime. So that's it. I hope you're inspired to make an Encanto apron for your little fan. If you've made it this far into the video, please give us a like and subscribe. I not only make adorable little outfits for my daughter, but I plan to make some for myself as well. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. Now it's time to clean up my sewing space and get started on the next project. See you next time.